Welcome to the NPMS Public Map Viewer. The Public Map Viewer includes data for NPMS gas transmission and hazardous liquid pipelines, liquefied natural gas plants, and breakout tanks. Additionally, it includes data for hazardous liquid accidents and gas transmission incidents for pipelines under FEMSA's jurisdiction going back to 2002. The Map Viewer also includes reference information such as state and county boundaries, populated areas, and several base maps to choose from. Please note that at this time, breakout tanks are a voluntary submission to the NPMS, so the breakout tank data set cannot be considered complete. NPMS pipeline data, as well as accident and incident data, will be updated at least once every two months, while LNG and breakout tank data will be updated as needed or at least twice a year. To start, let's take a quick tour of the public map viewer's layout and screen elements. First, choose a state and county for which you would like to view NPMS data. I'm going to choose Wake County, North Carolina. Now that the map displays Wake County, on the information bar along the bottom of the page you first see a progress indicator. This tells you if the map is ready or if information is still loading. Next, you see the map scale and zoom level. Remember that pipeline, LNG plant, and breakout tank data will not be visible if you are zoomed in at a scale closer than 1 to 24,000, or zoom level 14. Then the latitude and longitude coordinate location of your mouse pointer in decimal degrees. And finally, the county and state that you selected. Remember that if you would like to view NPMS data in a different county, you will need to exit the viewer by clicking the logout link at the top right of the screen and then select the new state and county that you would like to view. In the top right corner of the map window itself, you can toggle between Google Street Map View and satellite imagery based maps. At the lower left corner of the map window, you'll find the map scale bar showing both miles and kilometers. And in the upper left corner, there are quick zoom in and zoom out buttons. They jump to pre-cached map scales to further improve performance. At the top of the map viewer, you will also see the search bar powered by Google. Just start typing a place of interest, such as Houston. Click on the correct match, and the map will zoom to that location and place a purple pin at the center. While the search bar does not search NPMS data, it does search for states, counties, smaller towns, points of interest, water bodies, or even coordinate locations. If you're searching by coordinate location, I suggest using decimal degrees. Check out the coordinates on the information bar at the bottom of the screen for a reminder on how to best format your latitude and longitude values. You may have noticed that when I zoomed to Houston and my selected coordinate location, no NPMS data was visible. Remember that while you can search for any location you like, NPMS data will only be visible if the area you search for is within the county you selected when opening the public map viewer. The remaining tools are located on the toolbar at the top of the map viewer. On the far left of the toolbar is a button to open the map layers window, which is similar to a table of contents. The map layers window probably opened by default when you opened the public map viewer. Within the map layers window, you can click to make different data layers visible or invisible. Next is the query tools menu. We'll return to that later in this video. The remaining tools on the toolbar focus on map navigation, measuring distances, printing maps, and identifying specific information about the NPMS data on the map. You can use the pan button, which looks like a hand, to drag or move the map without changing the scale. After selecting the traditional zoom in or zoom out button, you can click and drag on the map to create a box to zoom in on a focused area. Likewise, the zoom out tool works by clicking on the map and dragging a box to zoom out. Next, 
the tools with images of magnifying glasses with forward and backward arrows next to them are used to zoom forward or backward to previous extents. The Zoom to Extent tool will zoom you to the original extent when you open the Public Map Viewer for a specific county. It's a good way to reset your extent after you've zoomed around the map. The final magnifying glass icon allows you to zoom to a township or range. Click on this tool and then enter the information for the state, township, and range in which you are interested. As with the search bar, MPMS data will only be visible if the township and range you have selected is located within the county you selected when opening the map viewer. The measure distance tool is used to measure distances across the map. First, let me use the zoom tool to zoom to the location of a gas transmission incident, which I would like to measure. Let's say I want to measure the distance between this incident and the intersection of Interstate 540 and Route 54 here. Click on the measure distance tool and then click once on the incident and then double click to end the measurement at the intersection. Or perform a series of single clicks along a curved route ending with a double click to complete the measurement. In the information bar below, you can see that the incident occurred approximately 2.1 miles from the intersection. The Clear Graphics tool, which looks like a small broom, clears out any graphics you have added to the map, such as measuring lines. The Overview button, which looks like a globe with a small magnifying glass, opens an overview window to give you a broader look at the area displayed in the mapping window. It adjusts as you pan around the map and zoom in or out. You'll see here that I've zoomed into a zoom level closer to level 14, so I'm being warned that I will no longer be able to view MPMS data at this extent. So let me zoom to my original extent and look at the print tool. The print tool will create a printable PDF map of the current extent displayed on your screen. Only layers currently selected in the map layers window will be displayed on your map, so remember to turn on all the layers you're interested in. The Identify tool allows you to gather further information about specific features within each MPMS data layer. First, I'm going to turn off the base map to improve visibility of the MPMS data layers. And I'm going to turn on the county boundaries and labels as a point of reference. To identify attribute information on MPMS data, select the Identity tool on the toolbar and then click on the MPMS feature in the map you would like to investigate. Once you choose to identify a feature, you must then indicate which layer contains the feature you are trying to identify. For instance, if you click over an area where there are both gas transmission and hazardous liquid lines, you must choose whether you would like more information on the gas transmission or hazardous liquid feature. You may not view information on both at the same time. So I'll choose gas transmission pipeline since that's what I've clicked on. The identify results pop up in a new window, which you can minimize or maximize, or move around the screen. You can also see that the pipeline I've identified is now highlighted yellow on the map. The top of the box indicates that one pipeline record was found at this location. If there were more, I could click on this arrow and cycle through each one to see its attributes and also to see it highlighted on the map. The identify results for pipelines include attributes about the pipe, such as what commodity it carries, who operates the pipe, and the revision date, which is the last time the operated, operator updated the MP, their MPMS data. 
Please note that gas and LNG plant operators are required to update the MPMS once a year by March 15th and liquid operators by June 15th. Also keep in mind that submissions to the MPMS always reflect assets as of December 31st of the previous year. Scrolling to the bottom of the pipeline attribute window, you can see general contact information for the pipeline operator in case you have a question or want to request more information about this pipe. You can also access the identify tool simply by right-clicking on a feature in the map at any time. For instance, I can right-click on this LNG plant, choose the identify option for LNG plants, and now I can view LNG submission attributes. The same applies for breakout tanks, accidents, and incidents. Finally, we'll take a look at the query tools. By choosing the Select Pipelines by Attributes option, we can filter pipelines by certain attributes to satisfy our search criteria. For instance, let's say I'm only interested in in-service natural gas pipelines in Wake County. I'll leave the All OPIDs option checked, OPID stands for Operator ID, under the OPID heading since I want to view pipelines from various operators. But under the Commodity heading, I'll first click on the Specific Commodities option, then click the blue box to select values, and then check the box next to Natural Gas. Next, under the Pipeline Status box, I'll choose uh, Specific Statuses, click on the blue box, and then choose In Service. If I want to, I can choose what color I'd like to display the features that match my search criteria. For now, I'll stick with the default green. Once I click OK, I'm first shown how many uh, records meet my search criteria. And I can also choose to zoom to the features I've selected or remain at my current extent. I'll remain at the current extent. As you can see, all in-service natural gas pipelines are now highlighted green. It looks like all gas transmission pipelines in Wake County, North Carolina are in fact in-service natural gas lines. I can perform similar queries on the accidents and incidents layers based on unique attributes within each of those layers, as well as clear my queries under my Query Tools menu. If you have any further questions about the MPMS Public Map Viewer, feel free to email us at npms.dot.gov.